Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks, wherever you may be tuning in from. My name is Tyler Benster. I'm the tech adoption lead at Cadena Eco, and welcome back to our latest instance of a Cadena Campfire community call. Today, we have a really special event for everyone here today, as we have both Stuart and Emily joining us on the stream. So without further ado, we'll, we'll bring up uh, Stuart and Emily. Hello, hello, and welcome. Hey, how's Hi, it going? Hi, Hey, going pretty great. And uh, yeah, pretty stoked for this. I see we already have a bunch of people coming on the stream. Um, there was some excitement last week when we we uh, pre-announced and leaked that Stuart might be joining us. So welcome, welcome. Great to have you both here. Cheers. So we'll have our, our usual compliments to the hair. I'll, I'll hear more hair compliments. <laughs> Love it. So we're going to do our, our usual format today where we'll We'll start off with a brief update and discussion of uh, any news in the crypto space and Cadena updates as well. And then we'll jump to a, a live Q&A section. So um, anyone that's tuning in, please feel free to ask questions on Discord, on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or wherever you may be tuning in from. And we'll try and get as many questions answered as possible. Uh, so briefly on some um, broader Cadena updates, the full builders call number one was released on YouTube. Uh, so definitely go check out that recording if you're interested. And uh, I think we're going to see continued interesting content around more technical um, things and more builder oriented. And so that'll be a common theme here this year. Uh, secondly, for all builders, we have the guide to building a lending protocol was released on the Kadena blog. So this is a pretty, pretty cool, pretty badass. Um, so uh, oh, catching up on links here first, the builders call for those that want that. Um, I think uh, a lending platform is a squarely intermediate to advanced um, distributed application. And so having that kind of information available uh, with comments and source code and uh, as a resource to builders out there, I think is, is going to be really, really amazing. So very excited to see uh, what people uh, do with that and what you learn. And the link for that is down here below. And we'll also hopefully have a, another technical demo and AMA with Thomas Honeyman to go through uh, Charka and, and how that works. And then finally, uh, beta testing of the Kadena learning platform is going live soon. So uh, continuing the momentum and the energy here, a uh, lot of cool, exciting ways to learn Pact, uh, learn chain web, and to get started building or to re-up your skills if you've already been building for a little while. So uh, other resources to look forward to. And now I'll turn the floor over to Stuart and Emily to see if they have any uh, other updates or things that they want to share. Sure. Well, it's uh, great to be here uh, doing the campfire. Thanks, Tyler. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got some exciting stuff to share. And uh, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, in terms of current events. I want to talk a little bit about banking uh, because that's a big deal in crypto right now. Um, what do you want to talk about, Emily? Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, now that I'm I'm back, we are happy to announce uh, at least one release here. Uh, the Pact LSP is now open for community beta testing. So we're we're going to throw that at you guys. We want you to kick the tires and you know see what you can do with it. Does that mean I can finally use Emacs? <laughs> yes, actually, Emacs does work with it. Vim and Emacs to start. Um, we've got VS Code plugins coming. And if anyone wants to get their hands dirty with it, the repo is, is on our site under Packed LSP uh, on GitHub. And yeah, go for it. Awesome. Yeah, so I don't know if anybody's noticed that some stuff has been going on with banking. Um, and I just wanted to give uh, the Cadena view on this, which is that it's uh, certainly, uh, it hasn't affected us. Um, it hasn't affected our operations as of yet, um, but uh, anybody who's been in crypto knows that banking can be a challenge. It's one of those less, uh, you know, it's one of those less glamorous parts of, you know, trying to keep everything rolling is, you know, figuring out a way to, you know, pay people and like, you know, keep the lights on. It's kind of nice to have a bank and not just have stacks of crypto and cash sometimes um, or gold bars. Um, you know, Bitcoin's great. KDA is great, but sometimes you need to use some other currencies as well, turns out. Um, and uh, historically, we had a real challenge uh, back when we were founding um, 
getting just a straight up bank account. Um, that was in that was in like the 2016 to 2018 period. Um, we thought all those problems had gone away and they're kind of back. And, you know, the word on the street is that um, while there's no legislation coming out that says that like banks can't service crypto firms behind the scenes, they're putting a lot of pressure on banks and you're seeing banks like stop servicing crypto people. Um, and it's one of these things that like, uh, you know, Congress is railing on about the SEC and everyone's like focused on the SEC. But behind the scenes, there's a lot of anti crypto stuff going on just with things like bank accounts. Um, so that even though crypto has nothing to do with like SBV and the, and the latest uh, problems with the banking industry, um, it's the kind of thing that we're having to do a lot of work to make sure that we're ready to respond to that and uh, diversified in terms of where we, uh, you know, where, where we bank. And it's, this is happening across the industry. So everybody who's in crypto, you know, don't, uh, you know, I mean, the funny thing, of course, about SBV, Silicon Valley Bank or SBB is that um, we tried to get a bank account there in, in 2018 and they turned us down. They were turning down all crypto companies. So it's kind of, <laughs> um, because you know, no crypto really got affected too bad by SBB, but, um, you know, but don't laugh too hard because uh, the, you know, the, Anytime banking gets hard, that means they start looking hard at anything that's a little off center and crypto they consider off center. So, um, so, you know, we'll be fine, but it's just one of these things that like happens in the background and people don't realize that it's actually affecting crypto because it'll make it harder for, in general, being a crypto company in the United States right now is, is got a lot of challenges associated with it. And, uh, you know, and not, not to mention on the regulatory front, of course. Um, Kadana, of course, continues to, you know, uh, be self-regulating and, you know, and, and very, very much focused on, you know, being a, you know, as we are a proof of work blockchain, uh, you know, we consider ourselves the most conservative approach to token emission out there. Uh, and, oh, and by the way, I said this on the last AMA I was on, but um, we are going to be putting out a blog and, and kind of clarifying certain things about token emissions. But, but the first thing I want to say is uh, at the link that we'll post here um, is all of our token emissions, the schedule that heads out for the, you know, for the next like five, six years. Um, so you can see everything on there. You can see what went out to investors. You can see what went out to the platform share. And, uh, you know, so this is, has been on our open source repo, but I think it got moved. So maybe the link I posted last time doesn't work anymore. Um, but, you know, this is the full emission schedule. And uh, this is uh, what we, this is ex exactly what we announced uh, on, the on, the, on the update to the token emissions in January of 2021. So there really isn't any change since then, but you can find all the gritty details, uh, exactly how the emissions work in the token payments uh, CSV. So that's, uh, but we will be, we will be updating our materials on that uh, in the upcoming months. So, um, uh, but you know, you can answer all your questions there. Awesome. So great section of updates. And uh, if there's uh, no other things to share from Stuart or Emily, we can jump into some of the live questions. I'm saving an update for a little later in the talk. But... <laughs> I feel like, I feel like the questions are going to lead to it. Very, very good. Uh, so let's see here. We have a first question here for from Barbaric Puma to kick us off. What development in the works are you most excited for over the next year? Hmm. That's a difficult one. There's so many irons in the fire right now for Pact, at least. Um, also, what could I say is the other question. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are happening underneath the hood and behind the scenes that uh, we, I'll, I'll wait for Stuart to tease towards the end. Um, but one of the biggest applications that we've seen in the last, I think, release was the introduction of zero knowledge primitives so that we could start the process of building applications around uh, sort of more interesting layer two stories and especially sort of roll up solutions to, to do sort of fast settlement from L2 to, you know, our L1. Um, on top of that, I'm still pretty excited about the introduction of Pact Core. Hopefully you guys don't even know when it launches. 
uh, that's the, the sort of ideal rollout plan for us is just suddenly, you know, things just start going a little faster, maybe or your errors start getting a little bit better. Um, so those are two big things. Other ones, I'm not really allowed to talk about. So I'll let other people talk about eventually. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline for this year and for next year. Great. So yeah, I can start spilling. Um, so the main thing we're focused on is um, is how we can take what is so amazing about Pact and make it available to everybody, not just in blockchain, but on the internet, period. Um, so if you've been paying attention to what's been going on in the Ethereum world in the last year, as, as, as Ethereum has moved uh, away from scaling, Ethereum is basically not going to be able to scale their blockchain for a number of years. And that raises the question, you know, given their track record, if they ever actually will. So Ethereum has moved towards becoming a uh, roll-up centric and, uh, and, you know, and there are some very good things about this. It makes it easier to, you know, to transact fast. But if you look under the hood, a lot of the stuff that's going on shows that, uh, you know, doing this in a decentralized fashion is still a challenge on Ethereum. If you look at what, uh, optimism is doing or you know which is the what coinbase base is based off of um optimistic roll-ups have yet to actually become uh reach their full trustless goal and, and to date are still using things like centralized sequencers um not to mention zk roll-ups um because these uh because roll-ups are you know designed to be open you can of course have a private layer two but nobody's really interested in that everybody's interested in public layer twos where or open layer twos where you can uh submit any transaction you want and if it's open that's of course means that it, it that it costs gas and so the layer twos are are charging gas and that gas also incorporates the gas that you would need to clear out to ethereum eventually so what at Cadena, what we're going to be announcing soon is a way that you can be using Pact for Pact everywhere. You can be using Pact to clear to Cadena, of course, and that's going to be best in class because you'll be using Pact on a layer two as well as Pact on Cadena. But you can also be using Pact to clear to Ethereum, and you can also be using Pact just as a high performance uh, web application where you can use the latest technologies like WebAuthn. And you know, and where you can sign in with your phone and all that kind of stuff, and even eventually packed uh, entirely embedded, packed existing just on your phone. And the idea is that it's going to be a offering that gives you a seamless experience all the way from uh, from from one side to the other. Starting on one side, you have our current what people call a monolith, which is Cadena, on, you know, just Cadena on the most decentralized and scalable uh, layer one out there. But then you can have Cadena in layer two, and that can be going to both Cadena and Ethereum and other, other backends to, in the future. Then you can also have Pact operating has a high performance uh, web backend uh, that could be interacting with, with layer two. And finally, you could have Pact on your phone. And the idea there is that now your data can be entirely private and you can be working with a web layer, which is then working with layer two, which is then clearing to a backend. Um, and, uh, and we'll be giving a lot more details on this in the very near future. Um, but what's great is that the thing to know about Cadena is that, and about our current monolith layer of one uh, blockchain is that it looks like a single blockchain, but it's actually 20 blockchains all talking to each other. And the way we are able to do this in Pact is exactly what's going to allow us to be able to do it across layer twos and even do it on web apps and even do it on your phone in the sense that um, that we already have a better solution for being able to move funds, move assets, move NFTs um, from one layer to the next. And uh, finally, the final point is that if you look at what's happening with ZK rollups in with like Optimism, some of these other things is that because these are open networks, um, they have to charge gas and ZK is a very gas intensive operation. So now people are talking about layer threes just to run ZK, but that gives you a hint of what's missing on these platforms that are hitting Ethereum, which is that they obviously don't have any story for parallelizing uh, transactions. So 
if you've paid attention to what we've done with ChainWeb, you might think about the fact that ChainWeb gives you the ability to do operations in parallel. So now start thinking about what that means in a layer two context. It means in a layer two context, you can be doing slow, you know, because ZK is slow. ZK takes many, you know, can make, take seconds or even a minute to run a transaction. Um, you can be doing that on the layer two while doing other transactions. And this is very, and for the same reason why gas is under control on our base layer, gas is gonna be under control on layer two, even if you're clearing to something like Ethereum. So um, this is basically the Cadena modular. Uh, these are the fundamentals of uh, Cadena's modular strategy. And you're gonna be hearing a lot more about it, but uh, you heard it here first. Awesome. That's a, a lot of interesting content from packed everywhere to understanding the story around how Kadena interfaces in a multi-chain world. Uh, thanks so much for sharing all that, Stuart. I think that's a, a lot for folks to think about. I actually have an interesting related question from KDA Today I wanted to bring up for Stuart. Why is having an endlessly scalable layer one so important when so many projects have decided to scale using layer twos? Oh, that's a great, great question. Um, so, you know, when Cadena launched, this was around, uh, you know, we, 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 Cadena launched in November of 2019. Um, but, you know, we started designing the protocol a few years before. And, um, you know, so like around that time, basically everybody was focused on all layer ones. And the idea being that like, who's going to be the, you know, that was when you had the Ethereum killer, the notion of the Ethereum killer. Who is going to be the layer one that was going to take, you know, take all the money away from Ethereum? Um, you know, now, of course, that never happened. Ethereum is, is still, you know, has the most TVL by leaps and bounds. And, um, you know, and, and one of the reasons why is that everybody thought that there was going to be a lot of stuff happening where stuff was going to be constantly being bridged from one blockchain to another. And that way the money would flow to where the best offering was. And, uh, Bridges have proven, as anybody who's paid any attention in the last uh, three years, bridges have turned out to be uh, an extremely dodgy affair. Um, and, you know, it's very difficult to send hundreds of millions of dollars over a bridge and not get horrifically hacked. So, um, so what this means is that uh, you know, layer two becomes the way to uh, to scale blockchain on for layer ones that can't scale, such as, the, and, you know, and, and namely Ethereum. So by Ethereum offering a better, by, by the layer two story that's like, you know, kind of capturing the imagination of, of, of the Ethereum community right now is because finally there's an answer for how you might be able to do a larger volume of transactions hitting Ethereum. And, you know, it's, we've never had this problem. We've always had the ability to scale to ever larger amounts of transactions, thanks to the architecture of ChainWeb, which, allows endless scalability. But what one thing that ChainWeb doesn't, or that, you know, Cadena's blockchain doesn't offer, and neither does Ethereum, even though it switched to proof of stake, is, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a, a, a kind of snappy, quick transaction experience on the layer one itself. So in Ethereum's case, not only is it slow, but it's also, you know, the gas goes up to the point where you, it's really kind of unaffordable to do much of anything on Ethereum. Um, but in our case, it's that, uh, you know, that something like a, you know, it, while you can scale an application on Cadena to settle, you know, the U.S. stock market, that's, that's something you can do today. Um, it's not, it's a settlement experience. It's not a user experience that's like something that you could like host a game on and get like this instant, uh, what, what people call fast finality. So fast finality has become something that can't really be done on layer one chains. You know, they can offer it up to a certain extent, but if the chains can't scale, then you never get to that experience. So a layer two experience um, allows you to trade off a certain amount of decentralization because layer twos are a little bit, uh, you know, depending on how they're architected, a little or a lot less decentralized than something like ChainWeb, which is the uh, Cadena's blockchain, which is much more, which is the most decentralized scalable blockchain out there. I mean, it's, that's why we, you know, we're the only one who we're the only ones who actually solved the trilemma, but the trilemma is strictly a layer one concern. Layer two is a way to start talking about a really fast user experience, and also being able to employ more layer twos. 
you know, pe people think that when that, you know, sometimes people like to say that our 480,000 transactions per second number is made up, but it's not. It's based on the idea that like the, the base layer can handle settlements such that you could be doing a limit, unlimited amount of transactions on a layer two settling to our layer one. But as long as we're building a best in class layer two experience, and this is, we're not talking about something that's going to take forever to come out. We're talking about something that you're going to start seeing demos of this hitting, not just Kadena, but also Ethereum in a matter of months. Um, if we have this layer two experience, why not offer it to the larger crypto world so that they can start seeing why PACT is so much better. And then you can be doing PACT applications that can clear anywhere without, and without changing a line of code, you can clear to Ethereum or any other, uh, any other layer one backend just as easily as you can clear to Kadena, but you get this kind of, you can, uh, you, you can host, you can put up, stand up as many layer two as you want. Um, they're not mining based. So basically they operate at a much faster clip. You, you basically get instant fast finality on layer two. And that's true of Ethereum. Layer two is hitting Ethereum. And that's true of layer two is hitting Kadena. So uh, that's something that we've recognized is going to be an important uh, an essential part of being a pack developer is not just having a layer two experience, but even being able to target multiple chains. Wow, fantastic. So I think uh, some a little bit of alpha there for folks on the the stream here hearing about some uh, visions and plans for how pack can enable not just the scaling that it does on today's chain web layer one, but on layer twos of the future as well. Very cool. Thanks for sharing, Stuart. We have a Interesting question. So we've had some discussion in some past campfires about uh, Kadena as this multi-core paradigm and how developers are uh, you know, learning and we as an ecosystem are, are learning and becoming more proficient at building applications that can scale using uh, multiple chains. Interesting related question from Clipit on how do you envision Kadena wallets connecting to multi-chain dApps? Currently, they connect to one chain. When will this change and how do you see it working as some projects will use all or a few chains? Well, there's been some, uh, Emily can talk about some of the uh, exciting upgrades we've made to PACT in, in the recent past. And one of those includes uh, nested PACTs. Um, but, uh, and in general, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening to make um, PACT even easier to use for this kind of thing. But uh, the fact of the matter is that multi-chain, if you're talking about multi-chain I, the questions I, I assume the question is talking about chains on the Kadena blockchain, and today applications can scale across uh, chains. That's not that's actually very easy to do. Um, the right now we don't. One of the reasons why apps haven't like uh, made a big point of moving to multiple chains to date uh, is simply because you know one of the things that would really drive that is gas prices going up. And uh, we've seen that a little, you know, in the sense of it, we already have multi-chain in the sense that we have um, a lot of Marmalade apps on chain eight, uh, and we have apps spread out on different chains already because chain zero actually gets, chain zero and chain two get hit pretty hard. Um, so, um, but, you know, that's one of the things that we're always working on with grants and with the projects that Kadena Eco is working with is to uh, is to work with builders to make them ready for multi moving to multi-chain and the learning platform and, and some of the things that we're doing with docs are going to be really helpful for that too so that people are ready to scale their app across all the cadena chains but in the future that's going to involve using layer two as well yeah i think on the cadena eco side something that i keep in mind is that we often see congestion in peak moments right there's not typically transaction throughput that's saturating enough chains to, to justify why you might need to have application load balance on two chains 24 seven. But if you're doing an IDO, you're doing an initial mint for an NFT project, there's oftentimes that huge spike. And you know we have seen moments when there's been backups of tens of minutes for some transactions going through. And so I think one of the big low hanging fruits and something that's you know readily possible today is if you're doing an initial IDO or an NFT mint, then you can just spread that mint across all 20 chains so that people can uh, just mint or you know purchase the coins on whatever chain has the least congestion. So that's something that on a smart contract side is actually fairly trivial today. 
Um, but what's uh, slightly more complicated is um, on the user experience side of, you know, how do you sort of help a user load balance and, you know, choose the right chain to execute the transaction on. Um, and I think that's something that you'll continue to see some, some more resources that will come out around uh, helping folks uh, with examples of, of how to do that. Um, because it's, a, I think, a, a pretty simple but killer application that uh, is very readily possible on, on Kadena and Chainweb today. Oops, didn't mean to click that one. Uh, we already did that one. Let's see here. Oh, this is somewhat interesting. So uh, while we're kind of on the ZK and layer two discussion from Need Beef, what security compromises come with ZK proofs and what kind of finality times can we expect once they're implemented? Mm. That's an interesting question. Um, in terms of security compromises, I don't. The, there are a few steps which maybe are a little bit less of a of a structured security uh, offering like the L1 that we have. Um, in order to settle these, you would need an L2, which is almost always going to be centralized to some degree. Um, and then when you are actually constructing the ZK proof, there's only so much you can do. These circuits are, are not super complicated logic. You can't do arbitrary logic with them. Um, and in that sense, they're sort of subject to, you know, whatever exploits are in the domain. Um, as far as the zero knowledge proofs that we supply, I believe they're uh, Boolean circuits in BN254, so the pairing curve BN254, which is well known for this application. It's what Zcash uses. Um, fairly secure. It's just not super complicated. And you can't do a ton of stuff. Um, so expect sort of L2 finality times with not super complicated transactions over a centralized service. Um, I don't think there's much else to it. You know, think about just being able to roll up, you know, 100 transactions in a single little, you know, sparse Merkle tree and publishing it on chain. And there you go. Like, it's, there's really nothing that you can, you can get into that's going to hurt you or your accounts. I think. So, yeah. Perfect. Uh, the other thing uh, I think with ZK in general right now is just the fact that, um, you know, that the faster ZK implementations use a kind of centralized, the, the <laughs> ZK part, uh, the ZK API that's being hit has a secret for the application that isn't decentralized. And as I understand yeah. it, that's, that's where, uh, that's Snarks, right? And Snarks is supposed to offer a way yeah. to shard that better, but Snarks are a lot slower. So this is something where we're going to be in a good position um, to uh, leg in on um, as our ZK offering matures. Um, it, we're kind of maturing alongside Starks. Um, and when Starks are really ready for prime time, um, that's something that is going to work very well with our, our architecture. Just have to highlight, I, I missed some of uh, Kobe Lazar dropping some great puns here in the chat. Will you be will you be naming of this eventual Omni Pact project Pact Tivit Interpact <laughs> Pact Pactivate? <laughs> oh, Pactivate. It's Pactivate. <laughs> Not Pactivate. This yeah, really yeah. Pactivates my omens. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's we great. haven't really thought of a name for this yet. We haven't. I well, mean, we I, haven't. I, I, and... Sorry, we, we yeah, should do we that. We should we all. should toss that. I don't know if I want to toss that to the community though. We might end up with something. Terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll it's, solicit yeah. opinions from select people from the community. The community is a very creative place. <laughs> a very creative place. Um, and, and to be clear, you're hearing about this here. This is like the marketing rollout has not started yet. So, I mean, this is something right. that, you know, this is real alpha here because this is what we're working on in the future. But, you know, don't quote me. Um, but, you know, you're going to start seeing that this is, we're going to, this is something you're going to be hearing an awful lot about with some very, very, very specific stuff. Um, but it's what I've described here. And, and yes, we need a way to talk about, um, Kobe's right. We need a way to, you know, to talk about PACT. But it is PACT, actually, because PACT, I mean, an interesting thing about Kadena is that we started as a private blockchain company in two, coming out of JP Morgan in 2016. So PACT was written as a general purpose smart contract language. And under Emily's guidance, it has only gotten better at that. 
um, and all the work on Core Pact that will be coming out soon. Um, soon, you know, it's it's hard work to write a whole new compiler, but <laughs> um, yeah, Emily, just putting the pressure on. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, if we get bogged down with uh, doing all of these these cool L2 apps for everyone and showing how everyone can use, you know, ZK rollups, we might have to push out a little bit. But I think otherwise, it's it's definitely going to land. Definitely going to well, land. Well, the vision of core packed, right, is that packed packed everywhere also means packed, you know, different pack compilers. Yeah, yeah. One of the great things that we've noticed uh, recently, actually, for for Haskell, the language that we write packed in the, the, the sort of implementation underneath the hood, uh, actually just released Wasm integration directly into the compiler. Wow. So we're going to start investigating packed on Wasm, you know, things that could be very cheap for us. Um, yeah. So for those that aren't familiar, Wasm is a web assembly language, which is the a new lingua franca that all web browsers can run. And so being able to directly write Haskell and compile into Wasm might lead the way towards uh, more native-like experiences in the browser, uh, which sounds very interesting. All right, we have a interesting... Oh, I was just gonna say just on the pack side that there's, you know, that one of the things that we're gonna be really, in addition to, you know, giving better tooling, things like packed LSP, there's also, we have, uh, we have people now you know, full-time dedicated on formal verification. And so that's something where also the user experience is really gonna go through the roof in terms of your ability to really use FB to achieve a higher level of safety. And this is something that is going to be just as applicable uh, no matter where you're using PACT. So to a certain extent, these are things that were already in PACT. That's my point. PACT launched with all of these concepts. And some of this is just realizing the potential of PACT. But having said that, you know, Got to do that branding, got to do that marketing that's, you know, lets you know what all the different things are and makes it, you know, but we'll, we'll have the cool matrix, uh, you know, the, the cool matrix breakdown and all that stuff very soon. And for those that want a, a firsthand take at formal verification, you can check out the, the call we did with Thomas Honeyman on uh, the faucet contract and uh, Goliath wallet, where we actually showed formal verification code. Uh, we had some mistakes and some problems that were unanticipated on the live stream. And then uh, live uh, Thomas figured them out and was able to uh, you know, gain some insights and improvements on the code base. Thanks to formal verification. So yeah, check that out if you haven't seen it. It might give you a flavor of it. Uh, interesting question from El Cid de Cadena. Does the team measure and share Cadena's adoption and people interested per country slash continent and what can the community do to help raise awareness about the fact that Kadena is just number one in building slow and steady to win the race? Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll say first that I think we're really uh, blessed with having a super international community. Uh, and it's amazing if you look at the Discord channel, all the different um, languages for Kadena, uh, for different uh, Kadena uh, maxis and, and folks that are in the community. Uh, in addition, I think uh, on these live streams, we, we see people tuning in from all around the world. And so I think that's a huge strength of the community is that, first of all, that decentralization, right? This comes into censorship resistance. This comes into um, how do you build a, a blockchain that can truly uh, serve for cross-border payments and purposes and building applications. Um, but secondly, I think it, it does uh, potentially provide um, opportunities to and to try and find applications that can can leverage those international communities. And so um, I don't, yeah. So I guess on the Canadian eco side, I don't know that we're explicitly tracking anything on a country by country basis. Um, although it would be interesting to, to hear um, where folks think that could be potentially useful. Um, and then as for the ask, uh, I mean, we've started to see people organizing more meetups in different locations and um, helping uh, more builders get introduced to PACT. I think those things are, are aspects that can be of, of huge help, right? If you are able to help introduce some some local programmers or or people getting into Web3 to PACT and into Kadena, you're directly growing the ecosystem. Uh, so from my end, that would be the number one thing that you could do to, to help. Uh, but I'll pass it off to Emily and Stuart in case they have other ideas as well. That's a difficult one. <laughs> How do you raise awareness? Um, I'm not sure. Well, you just do it, of course. But I, the community, I think yeah. it's great to ask how the community can help. And it's the kind of thing that um, 
we've had a lot of great things come out of our community um, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of community led efforts. And that's something that if somebody wanted to come with a grant where they want to do like uh, tracking, you know, they want to set up kind of like a, you know, a dashboard or a leaderboard or something like that. Uh, you should definitely come talk to Tyler and co and, uh, and propose it to us because that's the kind of thing that we're always looking to fund. Um, you know, and it, you know, one of the things about Kadena is that, you know, we've always done things a little bit differently. Um, and it's like they said, slow and steady to win the race. Okay. Well, I mean, I think we would all like it to be a little bit more fast and crazy. Um, we would have been fine with that too, but you know, slow and steady is how it's gone. Um, and one of the reasons why is actually that I think some of the ideas that we launched with are just now starting to occur to people. So things like, you know, like, how do you actually talk how do you how do you have it that you can have a seamless layer that that you can write dapps that are able to think about moving across chains um that's like if you look at what celestia and fuel are doing they're trying to introduce a language that makes it easy to do that exact thing well we launched with that right pact pact launched with this idea that there's a way without changing any of your pack code that you can talk to another chain and build it right into your smart contract um so, uh, um, you know, so a lot of this is, uh, so we're always looking for ways that people can like, uh, you know, spread the word and, um, and, and tell folks about what we're doing. And, um, so, you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, grants aren't just for building developers. Grants are also for spreading the good word and things like that. If you, if you have an idea, please talk to us. Yeah. You know, without applying for a grant, just start building stuff. Throw it on GitHub, let people see it. And uh, eventually we move towards a, a sort of critical mass of people who know what they're doing because they've actually tried working with it. And yeah, and also for, for those that aren't builders and are more on the, the, the kind of creative or the marketing side, I think, you know, just as we see in the chat, the creative, creative jokes like compact or uh, creating memes or uh, just uh, you know sharing things, uh, you know. Know if you want to dress up as Pac-Man for Halloween and you post that on social media, you know that helps spread the word. Uh, so I think uh, you too <laughs> can have an impact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think uh, there's you know you look at what what happened with. I remember my my sister maybe a, a year or two back, you know, bought a bunch of Dogecoin because she was early on the the Instagram meme uptick and you know that's a cryptocurrency that maybe doesn't have a lot of meat behind it but certainly has a lot of community behind it and so i think that uh something that community can be really helpful for on the cadena side of things is we have such incredible technical prowess on the team you know, exemplified by folks like Stuart and emily that we have here today but also a host of engineers at cadena that are absolutely brilliant and i think that uh, one of the great challenges whenever you're doing something new with technology is figuring out how to communicate that in ways that are you know, bite-sized, that are easy for people to pick up and understand. And so I think the community has shown great prowess in the past of taking some features that Kadena is developing and then expressing it in fun, whimsical, simple ways so that others can, can understand and appreciate and uh, hope that uh, people keep doing that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't mind the terrible puns. I think they're great. Uh, so please keep them up too. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So, a uh, question from Shokda. With competition for premier devs so fierce in the blockchain space, what does Stuart feel are the barriers to convincing builders to build on Kadena? That's a, that's a great question that we think about a lot. Um, and it has a lot to do with this new, uh, you know, with, with, our, with our new directions. Um, because interestingly enough, Pact is actually a great language for uh, web application development. Why? Because you can bring some of the things, some of the lessons we've learned in crypto to uh, traditional web applications and not have to deal with some of the things that like make Pact, that, you know, that Pact is equally well designed for, for working on a layer one or a layer two. So you can see that like if blockchain is, if a monolithic blockchain is the most kind of decentralized and locked down environment, Layer two gets a little easier in the sense that you're trading off a little bit of that decentralization for immediacy and uh, and, uh, um, and and a different kind of scale. Um, but 
going the other way, there's a lot of things about that side of the that side of the story that are actually very attractive to web developers. So, for instance, imagine um, in you know, like people are moving uh, towards passwordless uh, interaction with web apps. The idea being that you username password. It's not just username password. It's also this idea that like, you know, say you're uh, say you're a pro, uh, you know you you want to like send your credit history to somebody or that somebody just needs a point of data about you. It's ridiculous that you have to give them your name, your address, your phone number, you know, your, you know, all this information when in fact, all they really need to know is some kind of unique ID for you. So passwordless is, is like a whole ethos that is actually very similar to what we already do in crypto. And there's not a lot of good ways to write database applications that can do this kind of thing. So this is the this is an example where with PACT, within your smart contract, thanks to PACT having capabilities, thanks to it having um, uh, you know, the, the ability to handle signatures, and uh, a new feature that will be coming that I can tease, which is the ability to have sessions that are authorized by key sets. Um, you can now have the, the, a typical login experience. It doesn't really make sense for blockchain because the idea of a session doesn't really make sense. The whole point of blockchain is to have reproducible uh, authentication and authorization because that's the trust. But once you're on a web app, you know, you're working with a company, you like you can log in and then the company's servers know that you're logged in. So that's the kind of thing that you'll be able to say, set levels of security where you say like, for something like this, I just need somebody to be logged in. But for this really critical thing, you're going to have to do the thumb on your phone again, which, you know, to them is like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can do this all in my database model. For us in Packland, we're very used to this, this idea that we can have capabilities and fine grain security. Um, so um, why is this important? It's because uh, it's something like the amount of crypto developers is, you know, something like it's well less, it's, it's, a, it's a small number. It's in the like hundreds of thousands at most, probably in the tens of thousands. Of, of developers who are you know familiar with and building applications in crypto but when you consider the amount of developers who are building web applications now you're talking about millions and um one of the reasons why we're able to do this is because of bringing uh randy on the team last year and the fact that uh that he has he and his team have access to the larger world of javascript conferences so the idea is that and at those conferences we've seen a tremendous amount of interest, not just in PACT, but in crypto. So it's one of these things where like, if you stay inside of blockchain all the time, you start to think that like, oh, you know, developers don't like this, they don't like that. And what's more, everybody outside hates crypto, they think it's a bunch of scams. The fact of the matter is developers in the larger world are really interested in crypto and really want to know more. And so they can get their feet wet by working in PACT and then they can go have a best of best in class experience, either on a layer two or on a layer one, um, writing web applications, all using the exact same technology. Right on. By the way, quick shout out to miners of Cadania for being early in the impact game. Missed that pun in the chat, but you nailed it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. I'm trying to catch up here on a, a bunch of uh, comments that have come in since. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, is there already a grant awarded for a low-code packed app slash contract builder application asking for a friend? I don't believe there has been one, um, but it's a great idea. And yeah, I'd be keen to, to see what anyone, what you or someone else might come up with. So yeah, please feel free to get in touch about that. It's an interesting thought. Let's see here. We have a uh, ah, barbaric puma. Are you guys? Well, we do get constantly asked about ledger updates, and the update is is more or less uh, the same as last campfire, which is uh, that there's folks that continue to work with partners to try and accelerate as much as possible, but ultimately uh, it's in ledger's hands. Um, and but hey, I, uh, I put this one up here because you actually asked something new, which is fantastic. Uh, I'd much prefer something like a Lipple Titan. Have you talked with any other cold wallets yet? Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'll direct that to Emily or, or Stuart uh, in case they have anything I, to say I think there. That's for Eco, though. That, that Eco would know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's an Eco question. That's fair. <laughs> um, I yeah. To my to my knowledge, um, we we haven't. But if Community has a particular cold wallet 
that they uh, really like and would like uh, to see some priority on integration, uh, you know, please let us know. Also, and, developers wanting to work on it, there's a grant for you. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, thanks for that thought. That's interesting. Um, the other thing, by the way, is that we are uh, we are beta testing WebAuthn uh, uh, functionality for not just Layer Two and all the stuff, but but even for Cadena. So that's also something that will be coming uh, coming to Pack Technology very soon is the ability to just to use your phone's secure enclave. And don't forget, because Pact is a native multi-sig language, that means that you could have a, you know, you could have a KDA account with a multi-sig that is your phone, your watch, your computer, and, you know, and have, and these are the kind of things that are going to really change the game in terms of people feeling comfortable about self-custodying, right? Because that's one, I mean, it is frustrating how long it's taken, uh, uh, ledger to put, put us into their store and stuff like that. Um, we know that other projects have had trouble with this as well. Um, our CTO, John Wigley came from Definity and he said that they had a miserable time getting that done on their end. Um, and, uh, but it is, we are, as, uh, Tyler is well aware of, we, we recently started working with a better firm that can hopefully accelerate that. We'll see. Um, but one of the reasons why uh, this stuff can be slow too, is because, you know, let's face it, most people custody on exchanges. Most people don't do their own custody. And one of the reasons why is it's intimidating. And you worry that you're going to have this little dongle and then you're going to like forget your password with the dongle or, you know, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's the best way to go if you're serious about crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. We all get that, of course. We're all about that at Kadena. Um, but let's face it, it's hard to have a, you have to kind of design your own protocol for safety and, you better rehearse it because otherwise you're going to lose your crypto. It's, it's really important to have. So it's like, if you could get to the point where it's just like, you know, you have a device here, you have a device there and you have a device there and, and it's easy to rotate in and out of them. Um, that's going to be the kind of thing that'll make people more interested in, uh, in custodying their own crypto. And, uh, and that's the kind of thing that PACT has supported from the start. So, um, so very excited to see that one uh, come out which Emily's going to have for me any second now, I think. Yeah, definitely tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, we're coming towards the end of our scheduled time here, but since it's been such a great conversation, we're going to try and extend a couple minutes uh, longer. Uh, so we'll try and take a, a couple last kind of questions, comments, etc. Uh, one from Sebastian S. Did you try to connect with Naya Bukele to make Cadena an official currency for El Salvador and put some Cadena mining farms over there? Uh, we have not, but if you have an introduction, we'd love to take it. Uh, and so I think that goes in general for, for community, right? If you have um, an idea that's like a very specific idea and you have an ability to help make something like that happen, uh, we're always happy to, to help pursue things like that. That would be, that'd be super cool. Let's see here. Go for it. Yeah. Any other, any introductions to any leaders of any countries? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, I saw a question. Um, Oh, a uh, question uh, for me. I won't be able to pronounce this name, um, but about second quarter grantees. This is actually more at Cadena Eco, so I'll kind of take this one. And uh, several hundred projects building on Cadena. Uh, so first of all, for several hundred projects building on Cadena, if you go to cadenaecosystem.com, um, that's a, a list of 100 plus projects that are all uh, linked to um, that are building on Cadena. So that's sort of a, the sauce on that. Uh, and then for... Uh, second cohort of grantees. Uh, we've been doing it on a rolling basis. You saw the, the Teller announcement a couple of weeks ago with grantees. There's been some grantees that have gone out um, and the strategy has evolved a little bit in terms of trying to uh, make announcements in ways that are most conductive um, or conducive rather for each project's growth. So while it's very nice from a marketing perspective to announce a grantee before the work's been done, um, it's more useful to the projects once they've completed some aspect of the work to then announce it uh, because then that helps get beta testers in, it helps get people into the Discord, it helps get um, projects um, that are actually you know, getting user adoption. So that's been some of the, the, the shift in strategy there um, around uh, switching from more of the cohort-based announcement to more of the 
um, as the project is, is ready and, and oftentimes has more completed the grant. So uh, we may have some variation and some experimentation on what works best in the future, but I kind of wanted to highlight that the, the point of the grants program isn't necessarily to be uh, a marketing push for Kadena, but rather to actually support builders in building amazing applications. Uh, and so that's our priority first and foremost, and those applications will uh, drive use cases and drive adoption. Uh, so it's, uh, we're in it for the long term. Oh, and here's the link for Kadena ecosystem. All right, uh, we have a, a spicy one from uh, Rajesh Bakar. Question: Stu, give some alpha. I don't know if the question or a demand, but <laughs> just, this, this whole talk has been alpha. <laughs> yeah, we're just been alpha after. Alpha. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, wait, I I have some alpha that we can drop. Lay on assembly. We're, we're getting started with a new website soon. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and the main thing to realize is that. Um, about Kadena, you know, just kind of under the hood. And, you know, because I think uh, it can, Kadena can seem like a sleepy place. And one thing we have been for a long time is small. And that was intentional because we were doing things differently. We wanted to stay a very tech focused organization. We always wanted to, uh, you know, uh, be very careful about the tech we rolled out to make sure it was secure, to make sure it's decentralized. Um, but, uh, that is changing and that's, you know, that talking about Randy's team, but even the pack team has doubled in size in the past months. Um, our developer experience team uh, is growing in leaps and bounds and we're not stopping anytime soon. So uh, the alpha is that, uh, you know, don't, don't think that we're like that little sleeping giant anymore. That's going to change. And that is something that we're already, you know, we're already putting the pieces in place. Uh, to really, you know, it, the the time is up where like Canada is like this little thing that like people in the know know about. And our community is like a really important part of that because they've always stuck with us and they know what the advantages are of Canada and why Canada is different. Um, but, you know, they're not going to have to hold that up all by themselves. Not, you know, we've done other stuff, but it was always like uh, kind of tricky on, tricky on the marketing side when, uh, when we didn't have this kind of like uh, big developer experience capability so that when builders show up, um, they've got just, you know, endless resources that they can use. Um, so that's what the DevX team is working on. Uh, Kadena Eco is ramping up. That team's going to really be growing. Um, and, uh, you know, so expect more from Kadena, you know, we're, but we've been hard at work largely on getting the tech ready and putting the tech in place, but the tech is largely in place and now it's time to accelerate. Right on, Stuart. And just to echo that, the Kadena is hiring. So check out the, oh, yeah. the link below uh, and you'll see a, a, a host of open positions across engineering, Kadena core, ecosystem and operations. Uh, so a uh, really exciting moment. And for DevOps. those that are super passionate DevOps. about me, DevOps. Systems people. <laughs> Network people. We'll teach you Haskell. <laughs> Don't drive them away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, this has been a really wonderful campfire. I, I think we'll wrap it here, but um, please help me in thanking Stuart and Emily for, for joining us today. Really wonderful to have you both on. And of course, a huge thank you to the community for showing up, being present and engaging in such a, a positive way. Uh, these conversations, I think, are getting increasingly fun and interesting and uh, it always makes it really special to have so many folks here and passionate and asking great questions and engaging in meaningful ways. So, Kadena Army, stay strong until next time. Thanks, everyone.